program. <laughs> right? And now for the new announcements. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Might as well get some of this heat. <laughs> no, today we're, we're, of course, always in for us. I think it's a surprise or a wonderful day. Friend, just a minute. I saw a movie last night. Very sad, but yet wonderful. And it showed how we can control our lives, how we can make a difference. If we see something that we did wrong and we have the chance to change it, like a real bad situation that happened and you were the cause of it because you wanted it that way. Isn't it wonderful to know that we can change that and make it a real beautiful time? And I thought to myself, God, I'm going to have to learn and remember that because it really means something. So anyway, enough talk. Our minister of the day today is Reverend Fran Treistemeyer. Yes, it is. And she's going to be the minister of the day. So enjoy. Yeah, I like this. This is pretty neat. <laughs> Who would like to welcome you this morning. It is a, indeed a beautiful day. Uh, our first hymn will be uh, America the Beautiful, page 64 in your, home, in your songbook.
Father God, we give thanks in our hearts for the founding of this country. We thank those who founded this nature, nurtured and saved it. We ask that God's love fill our hearts and send to you prayers of healing for our country and its people. Father, Mother, God, we ask that all destructive thoughts are wiped out of our minds, along with judgment of others, racism, and intolerance of others. May our hearts be filled with thoughts of you. We ask that this nation be forgiven for the wrongs it has done. May the dreams of our forefathers be once again remembered, so that we may live in honesty and can be completely proud of our country. We pray that once again this country becomes a light of hope and goodness, peace and freedom, and hatred may die. May your love show itself in each of us, so brightly that it lights the whole earth. May we be healed, may we be forgiven, may we forgive. Father, Mother, God, bless America. Amen. Amen. We'll sing the Lord's Prayer. Would you all please turn your eyes to our flag this morning and say, Pledge Allegiance to America. I pledge allegiance to America of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. I know you don't have your bulletins this morning, but we can stumble over the creed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this church was founded in order to teach, promote, and demonstrate metaphysical and spiritual laws. We respect the truths of all religions in order to expand awareness throughout the world revering all life for the benefit of all mankind. Our second hymn this morning will be My Country Tis of Thee in your songbook on page 65. Okay, try. 
try it again. <laughs> This morning I'll be reading from the Aquarian Gospel, a book which I learned to love in Nancy's classes. Then Jesus took a loaf of bread that had been broken not and said, this loaf is symbol of my body and the bread is a symbol of, and the bread is a symbol of bread of life. And as I break this loaf, so shall my flesh be broken as a pattern for the sons of men. For men must freely give their bodies up in willing sacrifice for other men. And as you eat this bread, so shall you eat the bread of life and never die. And then he gave to each a piece of bread to eat. And then he took a cup of wine and said, Blood is the life. This is a life blood of the grape. It is a symbol of the life of him who gives his life for men. And as you drink this wine, if you shall drink it in faith, you drink the life of Christ. And then he supped and passed the cup, and his disciples supped. And Jesus said, This is the feast of life, the great Passover of the Son of Man, the supper of the Lord. And you shall often eat the bread and drink the wine. From henceforth shall this bread be called remembrance bread. This wine shall be called remembrance wine. And when you eat this bread and drink this wine, remember me. I didn't plan on saying this, but I hope I can get it out of what I'm thinking. The reason that I read this from the Aquarian Gospel. I went through all the Bibles that I had. And this explained what Jesus was experiencing, what our soldiers experience, and what we experience. And we remember those who fought for our country, whether they were in military or they were the first men and women who fought for our country back when it first started. So I thought this fit today 
it's usually done at Easter, but I thought it, every word so went according to my feelings about this day. And my feelings about this day, I think, are greatly instilled because year, several years ago, my husband and I took a trip to uh, Baltimore. And we took a trip over to what we thought was a fort. It was a last minute thing, the, the, the boat was leaving, so we knew nothing about where we were going until we got there. And it was the place where the Star Spangled Banner was written. I was not near what I am today, but I had an experience of a lifetime there. And just knowing that I walked on those I feel hallowed grounds of those people who fought so valiantly for us. And we as Americans, we can't forget this. And I believe today we do forget it. We forget every person who ever fought for our country. It's easy. We get so caught up in life that we just don't take the time to ever stop and think about them. Our country was born with men who believed in God. And we, if our government can't keep God in our country, we need to. Thank you. I got that off my chest. <laughs> now I'll, I'll read my, my sermon. For most of all, for most of us, Memorial Day is simply a day that is an unofficial beginning of summer. We leave winter behind, and it seems we have permission to now sit on our porch and watch the world go by, if we're smart enough to take the time. And we need to do that. Families and friends gather for the first picnic, and perhaps we take a trip to the mountains or the beach. But for many Americans, this day is much more than the beginning of summer. It's a day to remember those who fought and died in an American war. A little history about Memorial Day. And when I read some of this, imagine this, especially when I say General James Garfield. Imagine you are at Arlington. When it first started, it was a day to honor those that died in the Civil War. It wasn't a national holiday. It was just something that people wanted to do. It was called at this time Decoration Day. This was because the, de the graves were decorated with a flag and a red geranium. I remember as a child seeing cemeteries that were decorated with flags and geraniums. And many people also put a pot of geraniums on their porch with a flag stuck in it. Decoration Day was first observed on May 30th, 1868. Now, please imagine this. General James Garfield made a speech at Arlington Cemetery. At the speech, there were 5,000 people. And they helped to decorate the graves of 20,000 Union and Confederate soldiers. That must have been awesome to see that and to know that these people, they were busy too, and they took their time to do something for those who fought. In 1882, the day was renamed Memorial Day. In 1950, Congress designated Memorial Day as the day the people of America should unite and pray for their country. In 1971, President Nixon declared it a national holiday and that it may always be held the last Monday in May. When I read this, I got a little frightened. I remembered all this except the 1800s. <laughs> it, it, seems, it seems strange that you, you can go back in your lifetime and remember history. It's awesome. And so this day was a set aside to honor every man and woman who has fought for their country. It is because of them that today we are still the only earth, country on this earth that is free. We don't think so at times, but we got it a heck of a lot better than a lot of other people do. 
Today we may also want to remember those who have left our circle of family and friends, whether they have transitioned or have just moved out of our lives. And then there are those we prefer not to remember. This is a good day to talk a little bit with them. If they're on earth or not, you can do that. Wouldn't this be a good day to forgive them for what we think they did to us or what they did to us? It's also a good time that we may want to ask them to forgive us. And then there is another soldier. We need to remember him, a soldier called Jesus. What do we remember about this particular soldier? We remember his birth, his childhood, that he was kind, gentle, that he healed the sick, and that he taught us that life is about love. We remember how and why he died on the cross. And he gave us a very important commandment. Luke chapter 10 verse 25 through 28 tells us, One day an expert on Jesus' law came to test him by asking him this question, Teacher, what does a man need to do to live forever in heaven? Jesus replied, What does Moses say about it? It says, the man replied, that you must love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. And you must love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you shall live forever. On this special weekend, let us remember those we love, those we don't like, ourselves, and the soldiers of yesterday and today. And Jesus, one gave us a free country, the other free will, free spirit. In ending my sermon, I would like to say thank you to the soldiers who fought and are fighting to make and keep our country free. To everyone in my life, and that includes each of you, for you are all a part of my memory. And to Pastor Maul and his soldiers, who were wise and brave enough to use this freedom to create this beautiful place of worship. Thank you, and God bless you. We will now have our love offering. Uh, Lois and Bob, would you please do the honor?
I pray, Lord, that on this day we take your spirit and the spirit of freedom and learn its value, its true value. Thank you, Lord, for all you have given and especially for the freedom in this country that you have given each of us. Amen. Amen. First, we have to honor them, accept them, acknowledge them, bring them into the heart, and, and then we rise. And, and as a church, we can all rise together. In Ephesians 1, 3 to 5, where it states, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus the Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So therefore, what he's saying is that, remember, we were born on the spirit realm, and we were given spiritual blessings. So we have those spiritual blessings, they are ours. We can have anything we receive. If it's out there, we can bring it to us. And it says right here, have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Therefore, it's out there, we can bring it to us. We're metaphysicians, we know this. Accordingly, he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame in him in love. So if we operate in the spirit of love, we are holy and without blame. And all the spiritual blessings that he gave us when we was before the foundation of the world in the spirit realm are ours now. We just have to own our inheritance. Having predestined, that means before, us into the adoption of children by Jesus to Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Well, he had such good pleasure in us that he gave it all to us. To the praise and the glory of his grace. And his grace is like a blanket of protection that goes out over you. You're under the grace.